to the book of Psalms chapter 100. Psalms chapter 100. Amen. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of the lady who went out shopping and uh, as she was shopping, uh, she was in a European European village and she had several things that she needed to buy. And uh, so she made her way to the different stands of the village to buy what she needed because uh, she was going to make some quiche and have some other things to go with that quiche. And so the very first stop she needed to go to was to the cheese uh, 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 store so that she could buy some cheese to put into her quiche. And uh, she got her cheese, she wanted some Swiss cheese, she got her cheese, and then she went to buy some baguettes to, to go with her quiche. Then she made her way to the fruit stand, and uh, uh, as she made her way to all these places, to the vegetable market, and then she needed to make her last stop at the pastry shop to buy some pastries, and everywhere she went, she was frowning. And uh, she was turning her nose up and, and she was saying, how terrible everybody smelled. From the, uh, her first stop, the cheese, to the second stop, on to buy her baguettes, to the fruit market, on to buy her, 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 her pastries and her vegetables. Uh, everywhere, everybody smelled. And Sister Jane, she was putting her nose up and she was complaining, and she was not happy. She got home and she began to unpack all of her stuff. And as she was unpacking her stuff, she realized that the clerk at her very first stop at the cheese shop had not given her Swiss cheese, but had given her Limburger cheese. <laughs> and the smell that she was smelling all the way through wasn't that other people had a terrible odor, but her cheese had a terrible ripe odor, and her attitude toward everybody else was wrong because she was carrying the problem around with herself, and she was the one who was really in control of the terrible smell of her attitude, but she was blaming it on everybody else. Really, that's what Thanksgiving is about. It's a reminder, not about a day a year, but an attitude that we can gain, particularly as believers, of having gratitude and gratitude. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Gratitude and gratitude. And so we look at Psalms chapter 100, and I want to read particularly the first three verses to begin with. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Do you know that it's about it's seven times that the psalmist uh, commands to make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Seven in the Word of God represents perfection, completeness, fulfillment. It, 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 it speaks of uh, the university of everything coming together. And so when we look at this, making a joyful noise unto the Lord, there is a completeness about living life when we learn to have gratitude. Gratitude. And uh, I'm saying that word this morning, starting out with G-L-A-D, gratitude, and creating it as being an attitude in our life. Gratitude. Then he goes on down to say, serve the Lord with what? Amen. Gladness. It should be a happy, it should be a, 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 a joyous occasion for us when we come before His presence with singing. So there's two things that are linked here in the second verse. It is gladness and it is singing. I believe that probably everyone in here can relate to that, that when you are happy, it's easy to hum a tune or to sing a song. Amen. Sometimes you may hear someone whistling. You may hear someone humming. You may hear someone singing. And it's because there is a joyous uh, uh, attitude that is uh, uh, just radiating from the inside. And so it is portrayed on the outside by that song. And he goes on down to say, Know ye that the Lord he is God. He hath made us, and we, uh, not we ourselves, 
We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Several things here. Number one is we are a product of God. Not of Buddha, not of Muhammad, not of chance, but we are a product of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are a product of the hand of God. Amen. Uh, a product that is not senseless or mindless in its evolution or its production. But God created us with a purpose in mind. He has saved us. We cannot save ourselves, but He saves us. And then He places us in His pasture where there's all always good to eat where there's always plenty there is never lacking but there is always enough so doesn't that make you glad when you think about that we aren't by half or we aren't by circumstance amen but we are a, a, a product of God amen uh, we are a product of grace uh, I, 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 a lady was telling me it was a missionary. She said, and my, my, my fourth and final child is, is named uh, uh, Kira. And uh, she said, in uh, our Turkey, uh, uh, our country of Turkey, where we were missionaries, we named her Kira because she is grace. She wasn't planned. She wasn't expected. So the grace of God said, I'm giving you this child whether you're expecting it or not. So a reminder that everyone is planned of God, whether your circumstance maybe wasn't in your mom and dad's plan, but you were planned of God. Amen. And He overrides every plan. Amen. And so He's created you with a purpose. He has saved you if you're saved by the grace of God. He places you into a place where you will never lack, but He will nurture you and take care of you. And so I want to talk about that gratitude. Gratitude is having a glad attitude. The hymn writer wrote, When I am sad to Him I go, no one could cheer me so. When I am sad, He makes me glad. He's my friend. Amen. If you don't have any other friend in the world, amen, there's a reason to be glad because you have Jesus Christ. Now let's go back. Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's look at this, this a little bit. The Word of God says that we're going to make, we're going to make the ingredients for, uh, for gratitude this morning. You all got your chef hat on, your bowl out, your mixer. We're going to throw the ingredients in and I'm going to tell you how to have a recipe for gratitude. The very first thing is this. Amen. Uh, uh, the Word of God tells us to shout or to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. The psalmist is telling us to let positive or praiseworthy things come out of our mouth. So the first ingredient in gratitude is, can we call it a shout to make a joyful noise? Amen. So if we're going to have gratitude, it means right here. Everything that comes out of this needs to be praiseworthy to God. You know, even when you're driving in the snow on Thursday, that's unexpected. Amen. God's still worthy to be praised, right? Amen. There's something good that comes out of it. Amen. So, so, so praise. And so uh, here it is that, 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 that the praise, the word here, shout, or make a joyful noise, was a Hebrew word, which was for the trumpeters at the beginning of battle. So here it is, the trumpeters are coming to the battle, and they're blowing their trumpets, and when the trumpet blows, it's not a discouraging sound, even though they're going into battle, the trumpeters is blowing praise and worship and good news. You can fight the battle. You can win the battle. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Amen. He's the God victorious in battle. So the shout and the praise right here. Amen. It, it's the word that is used. Amen. The beginning of worship at a temple service. Amen. That they were a shout of the goodness because the king is going to appear. I believe that when we take on the recipe of gladness. When we shout, we know that the King will appear. When we begin to worship, Sister Tina, God shows up. Amen. We may not know where He's at, Sister Stacy, but when we choose that even though I don't like this day and what's happening, I still choose an attitude of gladness. So I will shout 
I will sing to the Lord, for he will show up. The next ingredient is serve. Amen. Serve the Lord. Chapter number, chapter, verse number 2 says of chapter 100, serve the Lord with what? With gladness. Part of our remedy of having a, 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 a glad attitude, the ingredients is serving God. Amen. It's not a noose about my neck to serve God. I don't serve God out of rule and regulation. I don't serve God out of fear of going to hell. I don't serve God because someone else has forced me or I think that it looks good in the community life. Amen. For I serve the Lord with gladness because I love God. Amen. So when I know that in my life, if I will shout and let positive things come out of my mouth and worship and praise unto God because God's in control of all situations, then in the middle of this circumstance, amen, I will serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. And then he says, not only to shout and to serve, but to come. Come before His presence with singing. Do you know that God is the originator and the inventor of singing? Amen. He is. Now, uh, Satan, uh, 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 his, his responsibility in heaven before his fall was worship and singing. He fell and he maintained that ability for some. He still draws a lot of people in the world into it today. Amen. There's songs written about drinking. There's songs written about fornication and adultery and drug abuse and all kinds of things. And that's how uh, folks get lured into all that because of that song. But God is the originator of singing. And God gives us a song. Come before His presence with singing. Do you know that when we choose to shout the positive things, and when we choose to serve with gladness, and then when we choose to sing, how many of you have ever gone through something in your life, and maybe you grab the hymn book, and a hymn meant something to you, or you're going through the season in life, and Caleb comes on, and all of a sudden there comes that song that you grab onto, and you say, God, that song is mine! Because songs are healing and therapeutic. And so God knew that all the way along. He said, so if you want to have gratitude in your life, you need to shout, you need to serve, but you also need to sing. I'm not looking for someone with a good voice. I don't have a good voice. Amen. But I'm still going to sing to God. Because God commands it. It's an ingredient for gratitude. And then He says, and no... And know, and know, and know ye that the Lord, He is God. Amen. First, He is our God. Second, He is our Maker. The Word of God says, it is He who hath made us. Amen. He made me. He's my God. He's my Maker. And then He goes on down to say third, that He is our Shepherd. Brother David, you and Sister Susan both said this, that when there was times when you were straying, the shepherd gently pulled you aside to show you the right. He's done that for all of us on so many levels. Amen. He pulls us. He nurtures us aside. You know, the, the, the ideology of beating people over the head, amen, from the pulpit, I, I don't operate that way. That's not how the shepherd works. And so if he's my example, who am I to beat someone well, that's, that's, that's working? No. So he's the one who nudges and guides us. So he's my God. He's my maker. He's my shepherd. Maybe you've heard of Martin and Brescia, uh, Burnham. They were serving the Lord with New Tribe missions and they were celebrating their, 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 their anniversary in the Philippines and the islands and they decided they were going to go to a resort to celebrate their anniversary. And as they went there, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a wonderful time. However, it did not end as expected. They uh, had terrorists burst into their room and dragged them deep into the jungle, jungle. They spent about a year in the jungle 
They were hungry. They were beaten. They were caught in the middle of gunfire. And one day, Maria, uh, or Martin, looked at Garcia, his wife, and said, Do you know, here we are, held captive, missionaries, celebrating our anniversary, held captive for a year. But all I can think about is Psalms 100. Why can't I worship God, even in this situation? He said, I'm choosing to worship God today. She said it was just immediately after he had said that. She said that she was shocked. And she was bleeding. And she fell from her hammock. And she slid her way down to him, seeing that he was shot in the chest and gasping for his last breath. She said someone came and rescued her and drug her away. And she watched her pale husband as she knew that he was dead and she would never talk to him again. She said they, 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 they carried her away. And she said, I need to tell you something. She said, even though I look at my life as a missionary and being given and my husband being shot, even though I went through, 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 through a, a shooting myself, she said, I, I need to tell you, I, maybe I'm just dumb enough to be. She said, but I'm really, really, really happy even today. And while he was white and I knew that he was dead, she said, I knew that he died happy. And she said, I knew that I could be happy because God is my strength and God is the source of my joy. Do you know as we enter into Thanksgiving it is a heart of gratitude that we need to have that is not based on what our meal is or based on what family is or is not there. Uh, all the events of what's going on but it's a choice to say God I am adapting to this attitude of gratitude before you. And not only an attitude of gratitude, but an attitude of gratitude. The scriptures go on now to say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with, with praise. Not only should we be cultivating gratitude, but gratitude. There was a man who was under Nazi oppression. And he said this. He said, everything that I own was taken from me. The clothes off my very back. He said, but there's one thing that I realized that no one could take from me that I was still in charge of. And that was my attitude. Could you be imagined being taken a prisoner? All your belongings taken. Every piece of clothing on your body taken. But yet that enemy still not having the authority to take over your attitude. God help me. God help each of us here today. To know that this week we own one thing that no one can take from us. And that's our attitude. Will it be a gratitude? And will it be a gratitude attitude? Really? The choice is up to us. Thankfulness is the opposite of every negative attitude you can think of. It's the opposite of grumbling and complaining. Thanksgiving. It's the opposite of discouragement and depression. Thanksgiving. It's the opposite of anxiety and anger. Thanksgiving. You know why we can choose to have an attitude of gratitude? Because verse number five wraps it all up and imposing. Sister Holly, if you can come. The Bible says, for the Lord, He is good. God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. So that's why, Sister Jan, I can adapt to an attitude of gratitude and gratitude. I may not like a lot of things in life, 
but I can own my attitude and change it. He goes on down to say that his mercies are everlasting. Amen. How many of you have experienced the mercy of God? Amen. They are everlasting. Not just seasonal or occasional or temporary with an expiration. But they are everlasting. Amen. And it's truth. The grass, it'll die. Wither and the flower thereof, it'll fade away. But the Word of God endures forever. Everything can be stripped from us. Everything in life can change. But this will never change. The promises never, ever change. Terry, I remember as a little boy hearing of the promises of God's Word that He'll be with us always. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. That I can cast my burden upon Him because He cares for me. I've heard that, Brother David. I've seen the dynamics of many people in my life, Sister Tina, are no longer here that was there at that time. Things have changed. We live by technology that, you know, when, when I was going to, to, to Bible school, Bible college the first time, you know, we live by collect calls home on a pay phone. You know, Sister Tina, you can FaceTime. Any time of day, any time you want. Even folks have told me that it used to be expensive for them, Sister Jenny, to call their family that was in another country. I had a man tell me this week, he said, I went into the military. He said, I was in Germany. He said, I sent my family three times. I called them very sparsely because it was so expensive. Things have changed technology. But one thing that has not changed is God and His promises. His truth endures to all generations. Do you know why we can have an attitude of latitude and gratitude? Because God is good all the time. And He never changes. And no matter what happens in our life, God is not going to change. He remains the same. I have to tell you that I have learned more than ever before in my life. I've been working with folks, many of them dying of cancer, many of them being treated of cancer, that treatment will work. Treatment will work. But I've watched as the difference in the lives is this. For those who are positive, their journey and their outcome were different. And the majority of those positive, if not all of those people, had the element of faith in their heart and their life. The difference in our life is, is when faith becomes joy in our journey. We have a lot to be thankful for. His mercies endure forever. I know I've gone a little longer, but this is what I want us to do. I want us to stand right where we are. I want to invite you to a place as you close your eyes. Every individual, close your eyes. I want to invite you somewhere. Could I invite you to Thanksgiving? Not to dinner, not to Thursday, but for to a few moments before the throne of God where you say, God, I'm adapting that attitude of gratitude no matter what goes on around me. I'm going to shout. I'm going to worship. I'm going to serve with gladness. And my heart is going to be full of gratitude. As you've adapted to that, would you be able to slip up your hands to God right now and tell Him how much you love Him? How much you appreciate Him? Would you say, God, thank you for your mercies that are in me? God, thank you that you are my maker, that you are my savior, that you are my shepherd. God, I have so many reasons. God, I 
have so much to be thankful for. We love you. Would you just have thanksgiving with God for a few moments this morning? Amen. I'm going to sit back and have my thanksgiving. But just worship Him for a few moments. Let Him know how much you love Him. Amen. All that He's done for you. 